everybody. Well, it's that time of year where we look down in the ground and your parks and local pavements and believe it or not, you've got a whole host of natural art materials. This week, I show you how to make really, really simple natural painting and drawing tools using bits and bobs of dried seed heads, like this cow parsley, um, simple twigs, grasses, that can be found growing up was weeds really um, in parks at the side of the road. I've selected dried grasses and seed heads because they break off easily and because they don't um, really lose their shape when you're working with them, when you're printing and when you're, when you're painting. What I've done is taken some um, masking tape and I've taped together a handful of the grass here and it's given me a double-sided printing um, and painting tool. This is a single side, it's good for drawing. This, this side allows me to make lovely, um, well, we'll see the kinds of marks that you can make. Um, loads of stuff. Simple grass can be used for this. Um, lavender, I've got cow parsley, which is this beautiful um, star-like head when it's laid out. Um, and I've got Toby and Anaya helping me today. They've got ink that's been watered down, but you could also use coloured paints. Um, and depending on how thin you want the paint, you're going to be adding more or less water. I'll also be showing you the work of a British artist called Michael Landy to help get you inspired. After exploring your tools, your drawing and painting tools, it might be nice to actually make um, some observational drawings of them themselves. Let's see how you get on this week. Ideally you want to gather grasses and plants that have a mixture of different textures, so soft, scratchy and also different shapes. I've got some yew, some lavender, rudbeckia, cow parsley all gathered here and they're bound together with really firm duct tape so it's going to hold them in place. Most importantly, wherever you're gathering them from, be sure that you've got permission. And ideally, it'll be from places that are overlooked, overgrown. So um, you're doing the little plants a favour by rescuing them. We've got some Indian ink here, which we're applying in very small quantities using a pipette. But you can use watered down paint, as I said. Easy does it. One drop really of this intense ink can be enough to create a dramatic effect on lighter coloured paper. Swishing and swirling and dabbing and dotting and twirling, and you'll find that you can create so many different marks. It's like mermaid hair this you that Toby's brandishing. And just explore, take your time. See what combinations you can um, bring together and have fun with it. You're like little floral footprints really. And that's the thing, you can paint and print, remembering that printing involves not moving the tool. It's pressing and lifting. Where of course drawing and painting involves applying the colour, the ink, and then moving the tool around the surface. Printing is the opposite of that. It's pushing down and lifting off or pulling off. Now look at this incredible map of botanical exploration. You can keep going back to it, letting parts dry, going over in colour. It's up to you. Get experimenting. And I'm finally going to talk about contemporary British artist Michael Landy. He makes drawings of flowers which can be often overlooked or even referred to as weeds. We find them, like the creeping buttercup here, growing between cracks in the pavement, even in the crevices of walls, in overgrown gardens, or hidden away between other larger, more decorative plants and beds, perhaps. Landy uses the title Nourishment for this collection of drawings. Nourishment typically being what we get from food, and that's support, sustenance, it keeps us going, keeps us thriving. 
He is really interested in that which can be overlooked. And another word for this is marginalised. Left out. Or ignored. Pushed to the side. He doesn't want to do that with these gorgeous wildflowers. And he's a careful drawer. He pays close attention to each part of each species of plant. They are delicately detailed. It's almost as if I think they've been drawn from spider webs. You see every part, the perfections and the imperfections, the bits that are drying up or dying off. Now perhaps you might spend some time this weekend, if you are outdoors, looking for little plants that grow in the cracks and crevices that people have all but forgotten about. Can you bring them to life in your drawings? And staying with CMV, and I have to say, I was blown away by Nature Club in the art room this Thursday. Lowen's um, group of brilliant drawers and growers are sketching out seeds and sage and lavender. And that is such a celebration of all the botanicals around us. Well done, everyone.